Hello! Well, yes, my original Nintatmo presence has stopped. Well, technically it's 50% not working. So the camera works and it still does everything else, you know, camera related. It just has no light. There is no infrared and there is no visible light. If you switch the light on in the app, what it does is just switches the camera over to well, daylight mode because it thinks the light's going to be on, but no light comes on. So, what I'm going to do is take it apart because, well, I've not actually taken this apart before. There are no visible screws that I can see so far, so this will be fairly interesting. Uh, and hopefully, well, hopefully we'll see if this module has actually died and if we can fix it. And if not, then I'll just use this camera somewhere where there's you know, a work and a work light, uh, an outdoor light, and then I'll just have I'll just have coverage of a lesser secure area with the camera, because it was a bit expensive, and I don't really want to turn it paperweight. I have replaced it already. Black Friday sales. It was like half price, so I've already bought another one. So we can quite happily take this one apart. Right. So in here to start with is the uh, what do you call it? SD card tray. So then here is the SD card tray. Holy Jesus. Uh, I can see some torques. Are they torques heads or are they security bits? Or I'm going to look with my eyes. No, oh, I think they're hex. They are they might be hex. Okay, we'll start with hex bits. So like I say, as uh, it doesn't light up, it's still I first noticed when I was using my Google Home Hub, and I put all the lights on, and what this camera did was go dark. I was like, oh, that's strange. And then went outside and there was no light on it. I was like, okay, so I toggled it on and off in the app, to which nothing happened. So let's try and pop these bad boys. Oh, it moved, okay. Right, so for those interested, that is a two and a half mil hex. Yeah, real, real common, two and a half mil. All right, well, I'll just fast forward me through trying to get all these screws out. I wonder if I'll be able to drop them down inside. Okay, uh, let me show you, can you, uh, some focus? So you see down in there, or oh, you can see empty holes. Oh, this is difficult, so that, there, those, oh, I'm the left and right, so backwards. Uh, that hole, that hole there. So there's four of them you can get to, and then you get to the ones in the camera end down here, and you can't get into them. So I think this camera module must be like the last thing to get put in. So I'm going to have to try and persuade it out without breaking it, would be ideal. Okay, I wish I'd been filming for that bit. So what I did was put my screw down there, press on that, and it clicked out. So that the camera module, can you see? Is, I need a better pokey thing. Is uh, is loose now? Is well, it's nearly loose. It's fifty percent loose. Let's see if the other side does the same. I can't even see the bit in this side. Oh, it does. It literally just clips in. Right, hold on. Let me see if I can. Here we go. Okay, and that releases the camera lens. There are two. For fuck's sake, David. Clip, and clip, and it's just a lens module like that with two clips on the side and it clinks into place. Set that there, because we will need it later. And this lets us in the camera module and those last two hex heads in there. So hopefully, we can get that. That looks all good. Is that a spider? There's a spider inside the... Piss off. Yeah, horrible old cunt. Right, let's get those last two out, hex things. And now with the camera module, uh, the camera module, the lens cover out the way, yes, we can absolutely get on them and unscrew them. That was fairly easy, that bit. Okay, so far, this has been disassem disassemblable, um, disassemblable, you know what I mean, uh, by, it's not 
it's not one of those things that once you put it together, you can never take it apart. But so far, so good. We have got into this far. And uh, I have a feeling that this top bit is just a giant power supply and a giant heat sink. Don't lose anything, please. Right, that should take off this bit. Is it going to slide out as a... Oh, it's going to slide out as a module. Can you see? Can you see the excitement of the... Do, 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 do. Oh, I feel like I'm tearing things. Oh, it's got ribbons. Oh, that, surely, wait, that's the ribbon we're looking for. That one right there. The one that's going to the LEDs. Why, who, what? So how the Francis do you get the... How was that attached? Oh, shit, son. I wish I'd realised that a moment ago. That once you get all those screws out, the whole thing slides apart. Ha <laughs> ha, that makes more sense. Right. Move that out of the way. And then lift that out. And slide your wires down through your power supply. Oh, they're just tight, that's all. Come on. Right. That lifts them out. Okay. So, that's just the back plate, which should just slide off. And just does just slide off. That is a big power supply and a big heat sink. And there is my LED module. It's got three wires. So I'm going to presume there's. Ah, is that me? Did I tear that? Or was that torn? Oh, I don't know now. We can test it though, we can test it. It's got three wires, so a ground, and obviously a positive for the infrared, and a positive for the visible light. Right, let me tidy up a little bit here and make a space, and then we'll have a, have a good look at it. Uh, well, in my haste to try and remove things previously, I, Obviously, pulled a little bit too hard, and I've gone ahead and can't even see. I've pulled off the tab for the um, circuit board for the light. So it's fucked now. Well, that just means that we'll just rip this bit open, rip out the circuit board, see if it is the light module that worked. Worked, and worked is the correct thing. And uh, yeah, we'll see what happens there. So, is this glass or plastic? Is this glass? Is this plastic? Oh, I think that's glass. It's not scratching. Okay, let's not think of that. So the circuit board for the LEDs, it's just one of those flexible type and it's double-sided taped in and uh, I'm gonna have to break something here. Maybe it's not glass. You know what I'm gonna say, maybe it's not glass as it shatters. Oh, there she goes. Mind your eyes. Oh, it's, it's glass, folks. Oh, oh boy, it's glass. All right, let's just stab, oh, stab our way through the glue. Stab, stab. All right, I'll bring you back once I finish stabbing all the glue. Oh, can you even see what the fuck I'm doing? No. Okay, I have stabbed off the glue, and that releases the glass panel. A uh, word of note on the newer camera that I've purchased, this glass panel is slightly more translucent, which obviously lets more light through than this one. Ho 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 ho, baby Jesus. All right, there is the flexible LED sheet. Now, we just have to expose some of these wires on the board, and we'll see if we can get a connection onto any of them. We'll just scratch at it just now. Yeah, what I'm going to do is just rip this, this thing out. Because of course the contacts for the LEDs are on the other side of the strip of stuff. So if this works, once we take it back out, I will be really, really surprised.
he's well stuck in there. Give him that much. Right, here we go. One LED moduli thing. With the tabs on there that are so small, I can't see them all, but they go to slightly bigger things in mind. The plastic, right, you lot. Sit there, well, Uncle David has a scratch at these contacts. I have been unsuccessful in my attempts to get a contact over onto the actual board itself, but I can make the LEDs light up. Can you see that? Can you see that? Because I can't, because I've got a black dot in the middle of my vision where I've stared at this LED while lighting it up with three volts. But can you can you see is my hand in the way? No, well, you see my hand is obviously in the way. But the LEDs light up. So as far as I know, there's nothing wrong with the board. So there's either a problem with the actual part of the camera that emits power to the light, aka the circuit board connection. Hell, it could have even just been the circuit board connection for all I know. Oh wait, well what I could do is try and rassle the end of this to get it you know, uh, a connection at the end of that and then put leads on that, plug it in and see if we can get it to turn on the light and we'll see if any power comes out of the thing, that's a good idea. Right, I'm going to put this back in this and see if we can get it to do a thing. Okay, if I get electrocuted live on camera, it's all for you YouTube, it's all for you. Right, I have the camera plugged into a plug I've got the bit of wire <coughs> poked back into the circuit board. I have my multimeter here, you can't see, set to DC volts. I've made sure I've got continuity between those contacts and the ones that go on the circuit board. And now I'm going to turn it on and see if we get a voltage reading across any of these. Uh, I'll hold that there, I'm going to turn it on. Oh, my plug just made some horrible, horrible noises. Then again, it is a very nasty plug. Hold on, let me just... Uh, I don't need to see any of that. Let's see. Let me just... Let me just uh, fix this here. That sounds better. Oh, I can hear the camera making noises. I'm not getting any... Uh, voltages from the... Not unless 80 millivolts is enough to light up LEDs. Don't think so. Can you hear it? If I bring my microphone in really close. It's going meep, meep, meep. I am not receiving any voltage out to... Oh no, that's wrong. I am receiving voltage, but it's millivolts and millivolts, and it's, the, it's got polarity, it was millivolts with polarity, but it's not enough to light up LEDs. 120 millivolts will not light a panel of LEDs. The beeping also coincides with the voltage changing. I should have actually made sure we've got... We've got ground and DC in. That's conformally coated, that's, that's great. It's great for conformal coatedness, but it's not so great for me wanting to test things. Five volts! Okay, so we've got five volts coming into the camera. What's the other one? 24 volts. It's got a five and a 24 volt rail. Is it really 24 volts? Right, I've got five. That's supposed to be five. Ground, five, and it says plus 24. Do I have plus 24? Right, I have made a development. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. I, I know. I'm working. Sorry. Right. Things beeping. Oh, you would not touch me. Yeah, right. DC volts. Jesus Christ. Things are noted. The power supply will slide out of the aluminium housing, which is very nice. Much easier to take apart. I think uh, also the, the beeping noise I could hear, it's coming from the power supply. 
a power supply is chirping. Now, in my previous experience of power supplies, this usually means that the power supply is fucked. So, if I probe, I have stabbed right into the ground wire. On the meter I have a good solid 5.01 volts of output on the 5 volt line. And on the 12 volt line, I have nothing. Uh, 1.5 millivolts, 400 millivolts, nothing. 1.5 millivolts, 40 millivolts, nothing. 1.5 millivolts, 40 millivolts, nothing. So, the 24 volt line is dead. Uh, 3, 6, 9, 2, uh, two 4, 6, 8, 10, 24 volts divided by 10 would be 2.4 volts per LED. Would that be right? Would that be right for in? Do you think the 24 volt line is purely there to run the LEDs? Because as far as I know, well, as I say, the camera was working. When I took it down, the camera still worked. This bit, the camera module. And when I turn the power on, I can hear it click, which is usually it switching between infrared and visible light mode. So it looks like, had I not ripped off the wire to that bit, I could have replaced the power supply with another 5 24 volt limited supply and had it still work, perhaps. Because that, well, that did work. The lights, the LEDs do light up, but it appears the 24 volt rail on my power supply has failed. That's what I'm going with. Wait, can I, can I bring the microphone in and let you hear the, the power supply? Let me, let me see if this works. I hope you heard that, I can't, well, I have no way of telling if you've heard that until I edit the video. But, yeah, so, the 24 volt rail has uh, expired, which makes the light not work. The camera works, as far as I know. The camera works. I'm seeing if I can point at a light to make it turn, it's a lot to put, no, do I just, no, I would still switch to night vision, surely. It usually involves a visible, uh, not a visible, an audible clunk as it switches over. Unless I've totally fucking ruined it now, which is also an option. I'd have to take it back outside and let it try and connect to the Wi-Fi and see if it connects. You know what, I'm just going to go outside and do that right now. Well, I can confirm the camera does still work. As uh, drive up, no light has started, resume monitoring. Uh, we're, uh, I also, uh, well, I don't know if you could hear this. On the on the video, hold on, I'll help next to my microphone. The camera can hear the beeping of the power supply. So, um, the power supply has partially failed in the Natamo camera, and it still works as a camera. It just works as a camera with no light. So, what I will do is, well, it's not much of a point in putting it back inside its shell. Ah. I'll see what I might do. I might put it all back together and just, hey, it could be in the workshop and I could have an interior uh, thing in the... No, wait, that won't work because it's dark in here when the lights are off. That won't work either. Eh, I might do something with it. But anyway, it has died. You probably could replace the power supply and get it working. If nothing else, we have seen inside the Tamil camera and how to take it apart. And it's not that hard, actually. Once you take the bottom cover off, Pop the lens cap off the thing, undo six cap head hex screws, and then it all just slides apart. So that's not, not three bad. I'm disappointed that it has failed, but hey, we learned something, and that's all that really matters. So, thanks for watching.